Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel Houseplanty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today is going to be a continuation of the plant review series. I know a lot of people have kind of become kind of fans of the series, so I'm quite glad that you're all finding it quite useful. But Today I'm going to be talking about a Monstera. A Monstera that I've only just about had in my collection for about a year, but I know that this is one that a lot of people are looking to add to their collections. It was exceptionally expensive, it has come down in price considerably. I don't have the one that everybody wants, I have one that's similar. But I'll show you in just a moment, but obviously the <laughs> I just realized the title will probably tell you which one it is, but you know. Um, but before we go into any more details, let's go down to some of the, the ground rules of these review series videos, essentially. So for the people that have come back, welcome back! You know by now that if you check the status bar or the progress bar, I always keep saying status bar, I don't know why, the progress bar down below, you'll be able to see the chapters and you can skip to your favourite bits. For the new people joining us, welcome to the slight insanity that is this series. But uh, in this series, as I always say, there is no way for me to be unbiased. This is going to be my experience with my plant in my care, in my conditions. And if you're just joining, I live in the UK, I grow most of my house plants in a conservatory and whatever that might mean in terms of both humidity, temperatures, all of these things. And for the people that have been here for a while, I'm, I tend to be more on the overwatering rather than the underwatering side and all the joys that that brings. But I do encourage you, if you do have this plant and your experiences differ, or even if they're the same as mine, please do drop a comment down below. Myself and a lot of the people watching this would be very, very interested to know. And what I'm hoping to achieve with this plant review series is kind of a repository of information. If somebody a few months down the line, a few weeks down the line, a few years down the line wants to buy this plant, they can go somewhere and they can see actual experiences from people that have had it for longer than a couple of weeks. Because my kind of pet peeve when I was looking at videos, and even now, and I, I get it, there's a lot of people that are just like, care and tips on this plant. And it's just like, didn't you just buy that two weeks ago? Like, how do you know the specifics of that plant? And I oh, there are certain things that are kind of universal to certain species or genuses, more specifically, not species, genuses. Uh, that you can kind of get on board with, but each plant I find tends to be slightly different because they're not all from the same part of the world. They might be from the tropics generally, but they're not all from the same part of the tropics. Anyway, waffled on way too much, let's introduce the plant first, which is the Monstera adansonii aurea variegata. And there's crispiness, we'll talk about the crispiness, it is in pond, it is in self-watering, but, and I've got a few things to say about this plant, but let's move into the first topic. So looking at background with this plant. <laughs> this wasn't a plant that I was ever necessarily going to get, and I'll see if I can get some close-up videos. I am filming way earlier than I would normally do in my conservatory at the moment, so it's a bit dark. Hopefully the lighting is okay. But yeah, I got this plant, and it wasn't a plant... How do I say this nicely? <laughs> I know a lot of people wanted this plant. And I know the stupid prices that it was, and we'll touch on that on availability. But maybe not the Oreo necessarily, the, the white variegated Adansonii. But yeah, I, uh, my line of thought for this plant, and a couple of other plants that are variegated forms of very common house plants, that also everybody that has had the green version, not the variegated version, knows how quickly they can grow. And granted, the variegated versions do grow slower, and how easy a lot of the times they are to propagate. I truthfully do not understand the crazy stupid prices. But that's just my two cents on that one. And I did hold off, and I'm just like, mm, 
I don't mind this plant. Would I like it in my collection? Maybe. Am I willing to pay four digits or even high to mid triple digits? Absolutely not. Again, my opinion on this. <laughs> I am sure there's a lot of people that disagree and I'm also sure that there's a lot of people that the pricing thing is is a bit of an issue but I'll again I'll I'm, I'm leaning into availability with this one just purely because of the price but uh, but yeah let me just tell you how it came into my care and you can see and I don't know whether or not you might be able to see there is actually two stems in this plant pot and I found it at a local garden centre and for the people that are based in the UK if you're ever in the east of England which is where I'm based there's a little well-kept secret around here and most people that are around here they're, they're going to know where I'm going to go with this it's a garden centre called Tavram Garden Centre I would link their website down below but it's not great and it doesn't have an awful lot of information and you cannot buy online that's the big caveat on this one, like you physically need to go in to see them. However, they did recently, like since the pandemic, basically they started getting a lot more of the rarer plants. And the interesting thing is because they're a big kind of, I think they've got a nursery attached to it as well. They can grow some of their own propagations. And this was one of their own propagations. So they bought in some plants, obviously I'm assuming they either imported either from the Netherlands or from the Far East. They sold some of the mother plants but they obviously took some cuttings beforehand and they rooted out those plants and this was a result of one of them. And the price was a lot better because of it but I'll touch on that unavailability again. And I think at some point they did have the white variegated one, which was slightly more expensive than this one. This one was the yellow variegated one. I don't actually have, for instance, I've got two Monstera albos, but I don't have any of the Monstera mints, any of the Monstera aureas or anything like that. So I'm just like, you know what, let's go for a yellow variegated Monstera and see how we get on. And I do have a few things to say about how I've found caring for this plant since it's been in my collection. But yeah, so I did kind of come across it. I wasn't really necessarily looking for it. I know some people had got some when the prices went down. I'm just like, oh, if I see it in front of me and if it's a good enough price, it's one of those things. If I see it in front of me and if it's a good enough price, I'll probably pick one up. Why not, basically? So yeah, and I did a uh, side story here slightly. I did have a friend who gave me a cutting of her white variegated Adansonii, which had a tiny bit of white variegation on the lowest leaf, and there was one or two leaves that were green. And she was kind of, she did say from the very beginning, she was just like, it's likely that it's kind of heading towards reverting. If you, if you, if there's anybody who might be able to bring back the variegation by chopping it back and seeing if it will come back, it might be you. Spoiler, I, I couldn't do it. I, I ended up with a bit of a green Adansonii, which has been chopped up into two different sections. They're both growing quite nicely, but as green Adansonii rather than a white variegated Adansonii. The reality is now having had the Aurea, and if I find one that's cheap enough, and I stress the word cheap, not just affordable, but cheap enough, with a white variegated, which I might do considering how much the prices have come down, then yeah, I might pick up a bit more of an established plant that has got a bit more of that white variegation on it, just because, because I've got the yellow one now, or the, the Aurea variegated, and I'm okay with it. But let me put up a picture here of when I first got the plant from my plant care up. It hasn't changed an awful lot because as I mentioned, this is almost a year old in my connection. It's probably not even just a year old just yet. So, but I know a lot of people have been asking for me to review this specific plant. So I thought I'd bring it out a bit sooner. I can say I've had it almost a year. I've had some experiences with it during the winter, during the summer as well, and all of the things in between. So yeah, but yeah, I think that's what I wanted to say about background. Let's move into the next topic. So speed of growth for this one. Yes, and I did mention this, I did touch on this a few moments ago, it is slower than the all green form, no doubt. I mean, any plant that you're gonna get that is a variegated form of what we traditionally have, even as a common and as an easy house plant or as a fast house plant that is variegated, 
by default, it will be slower to grow. And obviously in the previous section, I showed a picture of what this plant was like when I first got it. It is establishing itself a bit more. It did take a beat to get used to being in pond. I was also probably slightly overwatering this for the type of plant that it is, because even me, I'm still learning a lot of things about pond. I've done another video, I don't know whether or not it's gonna come out before or after this, where I review some of the semi-hydro mix that Soil Ninja in the UK are doing, and they've got a fine kind of, is it fine? Yeah, it's a fine mix and then a coarse mix. And the fine mix is meant for things with thinner roots and the coarser mix is meant for things with thicker roots and monsteras being one of them. So got very excited about the one which is a coarse mix and I might have ordered a 30 litre bag. <laughs> because <laughs> I've already started moving plants into it. But yes, but the point I was trying to make is I do let this fully dry out. I let the reservoir fully dry out and then I will flush it through so that it get wet, gets wet again. And then I've seen better growth from there. Yes, there is crisping. Part of that is, and I wouldn't imagine it's the humidity because <laughs> the people that have been here for a while know, in the summer, I was hitting 80 and 90% humidity in here. Granted, during the day when it was very, very hot, it might go down to 40. So that might have caused it. But this is also in a shelf that's getting, it was in a relatively bright location. It was getting some filtered light possibly maybe the light was a bit too much but to be fair I am finding that this plant the yellow aspects of it brown off so quickly for me more so than any other variegated plant that I have this one I would love to take uh, credit for this variegated leaf but this one was one of the ones that came with some of the ones that have come out in my care and they have got a lot more of the oreo which is why it's crisping up to that level and i don't know whether or not that's going to come out on camera but you might be able to see the two tones on the right is a darker tone on the left i think this might be a half moon is a slightly lighter tone and obviously being that this is an oreo variegated plant it has got polaroid variegation which means when the leaves come in come in kind of looking like they're going to be almost fully green and you think it might have reverted but by the time it starts hardening off you can actually start seeing the difference in the color and yeah i mean slower definitely mm, i'd say in the summer if the golden pothos in this conservatory would bring out two or three leaves a month this one might bring out one so it is slow it is a lot slower than the all green adansonii yes i have got it on janky support sticks and we'll talk about that and accessories but this isn't going to be a fast grower at least it hasn't been in my conditions or in my care if you've got the white one the white variegated adansonii and it differs please do let people know down below and also let me because i kind of as i said if i find it i might end up getting it uh, but yeah it's not the fastest of plants to grow so moving into ease of propagation with this one and you can see as i said there's two nodes in there really interestingly the one growing stem here has really not done very much it had these two leaves and it hasn't really done too much i don't know whether or not that ended up getting some root rot based on what i was talking about before about the slight overwatering that I was doing when I first got it or whether or not it was getting a bit too stressed with the level of sun that it was getting. The second stem is doing exceptionally well. The variegation goes through the stem quite nicely. And I mean, I haven't chopped and propagated this just yet. Uh, and I do need to do that. But I would hazard a guess, and I know you're gonna correct me if I'm wrong with this. And if you've got this, this or the white variegated and you've found that it's a struggle, it's an Adansonii. It's as easy to propagate as an Adansonia would be. Will it take a bit longer because it's variegated? Probably. Will you struggle a lot if you're giving, if you're propagating a fully white leaf or a fully yellow leaf in this? Well, yes, like you would with any other variegated plant, but this is still an Adansonia. <laughs> so yes, damp sphagnum moss, perlite, pawn, most things, this plant will propagate in quite nicely, even water and all of these things. So it is an Adansonia, it is an Adansonia, it is an Adansonia, even if it's variegated Adansonia. That element won't change, neither will the ease of propagating. And based on the fact on how cheap this was being sold, 
by that garden center, especially considering how much they were selling it, because when they got the imports in and they were much bigger or when the big hype and the big numbers were happening, they were still selling it at a kind of market price. So yes, some of the price of this has come down, but guess what? Probably one of the reasons why the price has come down is because of the ease of propagation. And this brings me nicely on to <laughs> the next topic. So on availability, and can you tell this is probably going to be, uh, I would imagine that a relatively chunky section of this video because reasons and prices. As I mentioned earlier on, this plant, I think both the Aurea, the Aurea kind of came onto the markets slightly after the white variegated Adansonii, and I don't think it was ever quite as expensive because there's not as many people that would want to go for the yellow variegated version of most plants. However, I will say I think the Monstera Deliciosa or the Monstera Brosigiana, I don't know because I haven't done my research into that, the yellow variegated Monstera that looks like the Deliciosa, I think at the moment is more expensive than the white variegated Monstera. I still remember the days when the white variegated Monstera was even harder to find than it is now, and I know it's become a lot easier to get a white or an Albo variegated Monstera. That was cheaper at the very beginnings, because not a lot of people wanted the yellow variegation. But then that became harder to find, so by default it became more expensive. So, I don't know. But with <laughs> with the white variegated one, and I would imagine this one potentially in the very beginnings, it didn't stay there for too long, <laughs> quadruple digits for one or two leaves of this plant. <laughs> and I would imagine it's because it started off small in the sense that there was probably, this might have been, I would assume, this and the white might have been a naturally occurring variegation that happened on maybe a few people's plants. So the supply was very limited for how quickly this came onto the market and how quickly people got interested in it. And yeah, people that kind of know the prices of these plants now know that it's nowhere near the quadruple digits. I'm pretty sure you can get most of these plants at least one or two leaves for double digits. I don't even know if they're necessarily high double digits anymore. I think they are mid to high double digits. It might be even lower. And I think this is a plant that is priced just went wee really, really quickly, which again is a reason why I did not want to pay the stupid prices for this plant in the beginning. Again, my opinion, and I know I'm going to get hate for saying <laughs> especially if you were one of those people that paid that much money. But not all plants are going to have the same kind of reaction to everybody. Uh, I did mention on my wish list video, like the Philodendron Dean McDowell was relatively expensive when it first came out. It's been on my wishes for a long period of time. It was exceptionally expensive. It wasn't quite as expensive as this. That might have been a plant that if I had that kind of money and it was disposable income for me, that's the other thing to remember, I probably would have got it for that price. The, the reason why I didn't get it is because it was just so unavailable for such a long period of time, at least here in the UK. And it's nice to see it come on the market a bit more now. But yeah, the prices were ridiculous. And I will say I got this, the two stems, probably there was a couple of leaves on each from that garden center for under 50 pounds. I think it might have even been 30 or 35 Great British pounds a year ago. So yeah, that was a good deal. That was a good deal. So that's why I was just sitting there going, you know what? Yeah, for that price, yeah, why not? And I hadn't bought plants for a long time and I haven't bought that many plants in the last year or two since I bought a house because apparently nobody did more they do tell you, but I just didn't listen. It's very expensive to buy a house and everything else that comes with it afterwards. <laughs> But I did have that kind of money to spend on this. I'm just like, you know what? I wasn't looking for it. Didn't necessarily want to have it. Is it cool and is it at a good price? Do I want to give it a go? Yeah, sure, why not? And yeah, I mean, it's it's been good so far. But yeah, the, the prices when it first came out. And that's the other thing that you need to remember with a lot of these rarer plants, especially, and I won't name another one because there is another one that's a variegated form of a very common plant, which is going for obscene money still. For me, for me, for me, I would not pay that money, knowing how easy 
these plants, the full green versions will grow. And guess what? The reason why this came down in price as quickly as it did is I'm guessing is because it flooded the market to a certain point. People propagated like crazy because they thought they could make a profit and they probably did when the sign was shining essentially, but then it flooded the market because it's an easy plant to propagate and a lot of people were wanting it and it then ended up becoming a price war which brought down the prices super quickly. I think this is one of the plants that dropped in price so fast and so drastically as well. So this and the white one basically. So yeah, there is something to be said about that and there is something to be said and a lot of people are probably, probably some of the sellers or retailers might give me some hate on this. If you like a plant that is stupidly priced and you've got the patience to wait and you're not just getting it because it's a trendy plant and you truly like the look of that plant and you can wait, wait for a year or two. See what happens to the prices because it will get a boom in the market. This is generally the trend that I'm seeing. My background is in marketing, so I sit there and look at stats on a daily basis. You get the peak, it gets really, really expensive. When people are discovering it, it's not quite as expensive. It gets ridiculously expensive and it ultimately will start dropping down. Yes, there are other parameters that you need to be aware of this. How easy is the plant to propagate? How many people are searching for it? If it's not particularly easy to propagate and there's not that many people searching for it, will that price come down fast enough? Probably not as quickly as something like this, basically. So something to bear in mind, I have waffled on in this section for way too long. Let's move on to the next one. So pests with this one and mm, it's interesting. No real mealybug issues with this, which is impressive in my kind of collection, people that have been here for a while. Yes, this was, and I just took it off before I put it up on camera, I had a yellow sticky trap on this. More so than anything else in my collection, this was a white fly magnet. And the reason for that is, if you look at some of these leaves, and even especially so the yellow variegated sections, guess what color they're reminiscent of? Yeah, the yellow sticky traps. And the yellow sticky traps attract the white fly because of their coloration. So yeah, I mean, when it happened, I was a bit annoyed. Was I surprised when I saw it happen? I'm just like, oh no, it kind of tracks. Like, yeah, it, it's a yellow sticky trap. This is a similar kind of yellowy, bright yellowy leaf. Yeah, mm. um, so I had a lot of white fly living underneath it. I probably still have some of their carcasses <laughs> uh, still on here. So I was treating it. It didn't really harm the plant to be fair. And other than the fact that I've seen now, other than the fact that white flies can be a bit annoying and very much like fungus gnats. And I've said this in another video, it's, this is comic for me kind of going, I'm really smug. I haven't had fungus gnats for so long. I've not had things flying up my noses and then I get white flies and I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, tracks. Uh, <laughs> so this is one that did have some issues with the white flies. Spider mites weren't really an issue with this one at least. Yeah, that was it really. It was just the white fly. Did I have any thrip damage? I didn't really struggle too much with thrips this summer in my conservatory, so I don't think this got it. But if it's anything like a regular Adansonia in that respect, I would imagine thrips would be a thing <laughs> that would be attracted to this. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's everything I wanted to say on pests. Let's move on to the next section. So coming into care for this one, and I will kind of make the obvious statement here, I'm not growing it in a terrarium, I'm not growing it in, in an Ikea cabinet, I don't have an Ikea cabinet, <laughs> the whole conservatory is an Ikea <laughs> cabinet, but I mean I am growing it in the conservatory, so a lot of people that might be sitting there going, oh is, is maybe the humidity, I've told you how humid this can get in here. I, truthfully don't think it's the humidity that is causing the the crispiness on this and to be fair I've mentioned this before a lot of the times with large variegated sections on leaves at some point they will brown out and crisp out how quickly it happens I find a lot of the times is linked to 
the humidity level. So if it's very dry, it will happen a bit faster. If it's very humid, you can stave it off for a bit longer. And to be fair, this these leaves didn't go crispy overnight. Like it took a good few weeks or even months to get to this level. Can I chop it off? Yes, I would. Have I chopped it off for a few of these? Yes. But I mean, that is something that you're going to get with these plants, especially because, and I don't know why this surprised me. Again, I'm always going to compare this to the Monstera Albo or the Thai Constellation. Those leaves are a lot thicker than an Adansonii leaf by default. I mean, the Adansonii leaf doesn't have particularly thin leaves, but in relation, it does. So anything that's very highly variegated that has got thinner leaves will crisp up a lot faster. So there is that. There is the comment I was going to make about the two <laughs> janky support sticks for the win. So they are there. Should I have maybe put a plank on this? Yes. And I'm trying to remember, I think maybe I started it off with a plank, but it was just growing in a really awkward manner. So I put some support sticks. To be fair, look at the size of that leaf in comparison to that leaf. So it is still working. And I found that a lot of the times with my Adansoni eye, as long as it's got something to give it support, you can start getting slightly larger leaves. Is this ever going to get the humongadunga leaves that you get with the planks? Probably not. And I can't believe I said humongadunga. I can't remember the content creator, but I love her. She's I've watched her on here for a long time. I'll probably add her at the top here, but amazing individual. She's awesome. But yeah, it's one of those things that, yes, had I have given it a plank, would it have matured a bit faster? Maybe. It's in pond. It did take a while to acclimate in pond, and I don't think it's the semi-hydro's fault. I think it was me mistreating it within semi-hydro. I've learned a lot even in the last year of dealing with semi-hydro because I think this was also the first summer that I had things in semi-hydro. So th there is that. And I can, I've already got two videos on my experiences with Pond and a year later and all these things. It's almost two years later. If you want an update video on that, on some of the other things that I have learned along the way, do let me know down below. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it with this one. It gets fertilized quite frequently, as in as frequently as most of my other plants. Is it getting any other special care? Probably not. That is kind of it. And uh, that's the thing that I find a lot of the times with some of these rarer plants. And this might grind some nerves, basically. It's a survival die in my care, basically. I will baby them to a certain extent, some of the slightly harder ones, some of the slightly more difficult ones. But I need I need my plants in this place to be feral, basically, as I've mentioned in previous videos. You need to survive or perish, essentially. Yes, and I know before some people get pressed, we do have a kind of almost a duty of care on some of these. Not this one specifically, on some of the truly rare plants that might have issues in the nature, and I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the... <laughs> the rare plants that are just slightly harder to find, but there's enough of them out there. Like if mine doesn't survive, there's probably a good few hundred of thousands of other basically that are gonna be fine. But it needs to acclimate. And a lot of the times, this might be the surprising thing for most people, as long as you don't mind looking at some crispy leaves and looking at a slightly scraggly plant for about a year, and I really don't mind because these plants, not necessarily a variegated form because this wouldn't necessarily be naturally occurring all the time in nature, but with some of these plants that look a bit scraggly, they might do that, that in your nature as well. Let them acclimate. It might take a year, it might take a year and a half. I've been doing this for a while now. Eventually, most plants will acclimate in your care, and if they really dislike your care, they might just perish, and you can either move it before that happens or just realize that, that plant maybe isn't for you. So. So many tangents on this video, and I've only had the one coffee today. Really shocking. But anyway, I think that's everything I wanted to say about accessories and care on this one. Oh, wow. Uh, let's move on to final thoughts. So I've put the plant down because it's getting exceptionally heavy. People that have been here for a while know, like, things with it in pond, even if it's a relatively small pot, after holding it up for a while, you get a bit of a sore arm. So, coming into the final thoughts, and I will always do what I do in the beginning and say, knowing what I know now, if I didn't have this plant, would I purchase it again? Probably. Probably. For the price that I got it, probably. 
any more than that? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Like it's, <laughs> it's, it's an ad Antonio. I get certain kind of smaller, more tropical, more kind of definitely need a, um, a terrarium, but they're small and you can kind of grow them. I've got a crested gecko. I could grow it in with the crested gecko. Fine. For something that's going to ultimately potentially get quite tall, or quite large, and all of these things, I need it to be relatively hardy if I'm going to spend a lot of money on it, because I just don't have the care to it. If I had a massive glass cabinet, not talking about the IKEA one, I'm talking about the ones that you sometimes see in plant stores or even in some like corporate buildings where an entire wall is kind of a terrarium essentially. They've got glass and all these things and they can grow some much, much bigger specimens of plants within that space, then yes. And by the way, just a side note, that is goals. I would love that eventually. If I'm buying, if I move from this house and buy a different house that might be slightly bigger and has a room that I can convert into that, watch me do that. But, and I don't say that I've got the money to do either of those two things anytime soon, but if it does happen, you know, like dreams. But, yeah, so I would say I would definitely get that. Now, scoring this plant from 0, 1 being the worst, 10 being the best, where would I score this? A 5, a 6, add a good day, a 7, and I probably wouldn't go as far as say a 7, a 5 or a 6. But don't get me wrong, I still like this plant. But, there's a but obviously. If it does come down, so if this gets to the point, and I'm assuming it might do both the Aurea variegated and the white variegated, gets down to the cost of a regular ad and Sony eye and people can get it into their homes a lot easier, so you're less worried about it having issues. Yeah, I think I think I would give it a seven at that point. Yes, it's still potentially gonna crisp up and it might have some idiosyncrasies and things like that. But if it stays even at the price that I got it at or slightly higher, it's, I don't know, a lot of the times I will tend to prefer variegated forms of plants over the green form of the plants. Having grown that for a bit and seeing the, well, the way that it grows and the crispiness of all things, saying, oh, it's still nice. I still have to say I prefer my all green Adansonii. There is something, and it's not often that you hear a lot of people saying this, but no, there are a few plants that are common in their green form and uncommon or slightly rarer in their variegated form that I will always land on. I still prefer the green form. Not always, but yeah, sometimes. Anyway, rattled on for way too long in this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.